put the books down and start spending time with elders. So when I was learning from the LLC books, I learned for five years like that. Um, and my dad finally admitted to me when I started questioning the LLC, he says, I couldn't understand you. I can't understand that stuff. I can just understand how our speakers talk. That should be a wake up call to all of us. I later learned that elders call this new dialect, they call it the Indiana dialect or the the Hota dialect, the gray dialect, because we over aspirate that, that H sound. But even Colorado knew this, that KH, PH, um, TH sound, it's different in each dialect. So what the LLC did was they tried to standardize that sound but they overdid it for most dialects. Anyway, you can tell who spends a lot of time with elders and who learns from books in a very short period of time. Here are some examples. A i u p t e. Book learners say a i u p t e. Speakers will say a i u p t e. So if you're paying attention at home, the writing system, there are two ways to say the i sound, the i letter, e and i. Magna he. Are you tricking me? Mayaganayahe. But they jam that together and it sounds like cab. Magnahe. But that's two ways to write the A sound. Ah and a. Ah. Slowa. This one drives speakers crazy when we say slowa. <laughs> but it's slowa. Instead of slowaye, it sounds like cab. Slowa. They drop that Y. Ah, bleze. They drop the W instead of a wobbleze, a bleze. They just drag that a. Aichi loan. Again, it's, they drop the W, a wicha loan. The endings of words, instead of un yampikte, they'll say un yokte. They'll drop those B in front of kte, so they'll drop the pikte to, to change them to O's, un yokte. Even words like selechecha, to make it glide better and transition better, they'll say selechicha. They'll change endings, they won't go into bellows or be bees, they'll say unyamp. They'll change the endings to M and Bs. Instead of unyampi, they'll say unyamp. They'll swallow it like like mom, unyamp. Of course, there are just different words that are used. We say we use shloke for like scissors that are different between dialects. And stress is a big part that the LLC messed up. And intonation, like where sentences rise and fall. Speakers will stress the same word in different spots, depending on sentences. The very same speaker. The biggest damage is when a speaker corrects us, but learners go and take it to the LLC and see if it's correct or not, and then go with the LLC. They will see it. But speakers will blend that first part. Blend or glued sounds where they're stuck so tight together, they kind of make a new sound. Wang. Wang. And then, of course, at the end, they'll take out the pikte, like we talked about. So it'll become wankaukte. And that's why people say we wangwachi for Sunday. Instead of the more formalized we wayangwachi. And just like the definition of words Albert talked about as we reclaim the translations of our words, we reclaim our spirituality. He goes into like wakan, that it means it has the power to do good or the power to bring negative. Wachekia. Missionaries thought it meant to pray, but what it really means is to embrace someone as a relative. So we embraced the Creator as a relative and expressed our needs. Um, I was talking to Jerome Kilsmall, Chong Wakang. They say it means cowardly or something, but Jerome said it means cautious. And uh, another elder, Chris, told me that um, Crazy Horse always used to have someone who had Chong Wakang um, before he went into battle because they could see things clearly and they could see the the impossible um, steps ahead and what could happen. Ichiloa, I think they translate it as like a death song, but that's not really what it means. It means to like sing to yourself, to soothe yourself. From what I understand, the elders, we never really had death songs. That's like an anthropologist thing. It means to soothe yourself. Another word is like tiopa. People just say that means door, but it could mean all kinds of things. Something that we pass through, it could mean like a portal. It's just crazy the depths of our words so like khlete, um i think they it's like something anyway it gets to drunkard or something in their in their in their dictionary what that means and what it, it was explained to me is like someone who sees the danger but they do it anyway 
like my uncle Brian, he translates it as brave. So it's like a little kid that wants to jump off the couch. They know what's going to happen, but they do it anyway, just to see. I thought it meant mischievous, but it really doesn't. The big difference you can see in this, though, is ask someone their Lakota name, then look it up in an LLC dictionary and see what it says, and then go ask that, that person the story behind their name. That's what we're losing. The philosophy, the spirituality, the depth of our language. So when learners are spouting off the benefits of these dictionaries, question it. Go spend time with speakers. There's just no shortcut. Take good care of them. Give them obagi, money, gas, food. Just go spend time with them. And listen. The main important part is listening to the language. So that way we're not saying malakota, I am gray. We're saying malakota.